Hey, welcome back friends. Today's video is gonna be a building project taking place out here in my firewood storage area. Now this is a design that I came up with myself. I built them about seven years ago. And this is a single row firewood storage. This area right here is about 10 feet. And I believe it's about five feet tall. And they're four by four posts that are cemented in the ground. And then I have another section a little further back same thing and that works really well for me and then over on this side over here I have an area which is double row firewood storage and I thought that would be nice but I'm really not that happy with it so I'm gonna modify it to a single row so that's what you're gonna see in today's video and I also have some new Milwaukee tools to use on this building project which I'm excited about so I'm new to the Milwaukee Packout system which I'm really liking because I can just organize all the different tools I need for a project like this and I can just roll it probably like 300 feet from my house out here to my firewood storage area and then I have one of their lasers which is really handy for leveling some of the posts and I also have some of their new sawzall blades and some of their multi-tool blades as well too and then finally last but not least we have the Milwaukee M18 fuel compressor so we're gonna take a look at the modification I'm gonna make but before I do I just want to say that I've been really busy this summer and I didn't get a chance to get this filled up with firewood but that's gonna happen so you might see in some of my videos a backdrop of some firewood but I do have quite a bit over here that's all dried and ready to split that will happen this month in November so let's go over here so it's helping me clear everything off this rack right here and then I'm gonna get the sawzall blade and cut some of these branches back because they're starting to grow in the way too now we're gonna put the ax blade in and we're gonna go around here, cut some of the stuff back. Right. Yeah, I was thinking about cutting this, but I think I'm just gonna leave it for now. Not really in the way that much. It only took a couple minutes with the ax blade and my sawzall to clear everything back so I don't have all these branches hanging into this rack right here. And I just wanna take a quick minute to explain why I'm going to a single row design. The double row design doesn't work too well because first thing is I can't really get around this side with a wheelbarrow unless I completely cut this which I don't want to do and then trying to load from this side it's a little difficult on your back and you hit your shins up against right here trying to reach that far over or you have to step up each time it's just not ideal and then what I quickly discovered when you have double rows like this the mice have more places to hide in between the two so I just didn't like that so I'm going back to the single row everything made sense for that Okay, so now while we have the sawzall out, let's work on another project with it. So I put the record nine inch sawzall blade in right here. And what I'm gonna do, I have a bunch of nail embedded wood and I have these straps right here. So I'm just gonna cut both sides right here. This was just an idea that I had a long time ago for putting some limbs in there. And then I had a, an item in there that would hold it down. It had a locking pin, but I came across something better. So I just wanna take this out of here completely. Love it. All right, I guess I could have used my impact to take these off, but I think this is more fun. So there you can see how the wrecker works. So 
So we're gonna use the X blade to finish off this cut right here. Go to the other side. All right, so in one of my recent videos, I showed you the M12 multi-tool right here. So actually, you just never really know what you're gonna use this for. I, I can't really say like there's one specific thing, but there's just all these random items that you come into where this comes in really handy. And I also picked up this case right here. This just has some general purpose blades. That wide one's really nice. I was able to cut down a four x four post with it. And then right here I have the narrower one and then there's like a medium size. So as I was mentioning, you never know when you're gonna need a multi-tool, but right here is a little tab. And what I was trying to do is put the magnet of the laser right up against that by that little tab sticking out and I really don't need it. So I'm gonna just see how quick I can cut that off. Turn the speed up a little bit. All right, so it's flush. So now we have the magnets of the laser. We want that to go right in this area here. We'll see how that looks, and then we'll adjust it up and down if we need to. Okay. All right, so right now I just turned the laser level on. I had this post right here that holds some of the firewood in, in my lean-to shed. So I have it adjusted about where I want. So you can see right here where I'm gonna cut. That makes it really easy having a cross-line laser. So if you can wait a little bit later in the day, you can really mark several things in a hurry. It's pretty awesome. If you're trying to do it in bright daylight, Milwaukee is coming out with a detector that I believe will work with this laser right here in the daylight, but we'll see how that works in a month when that comes out. All right, so we have the ax blade in here again. We're gonna take this four by four post out I'm gonna cut it somewhat close to the ground. I'm gonna wait till daylight so I can cut it flush and see a little better. Okay, one more cut. All right. All right, so according to my calculations, this whole thing should just tip all in one section. Yes, love it. So we remove the other section and now we have a single four x four right here. I'm gonna cut that flush and then put a new deck board in. Finish nailing that down. Timber. <laughs> We're back out here the next day. Just nice fall weather. And we just have a few more things to do on this right here. There's a four x four post in the middle that's cemented in the ground. I'm gonna run some lag bolts on that. And it looks like I have a two x four going across. That will just support it from sagging down in the middle. A lot of times I'm working by myself and the trick that I like to use is to get a trim nailer. This runs two and a half inch trim nails and they're galvanized. So I like to use this just to tack it up with uh, probably like four or five nails in it. And then I can go all around, get things where I want, and then come back with some deck screws in my impact. There, that's nice and solid. We can get some deck screws in there now. Decent.
All right, so let's take a close up of some of these items. So the pack out works really nice. I can put everything on this right here, except for the compressor, and I can roll it all up. So it's just nice having everything organized. I just really happy with this right here and look forward to making some additions to it as well. And then we've got the Milwaukee M18 compressor that did a nice job running one of my air nailers. And then the M12 fuel multi-purpose tool with the general purpose blades. And then the Sawzall that always comes in handy running the wrecker blade and the X. So I'm back here now in the daylight so you can see the final results of the firewood rack modification. And I really like being able to just walk right up to it and not have to have that double road to reach over to the far side. This works really well and this holds 1.25 base cords of firewood. I didn't mention this before, but I like having the ends the same width as the bottom, because that way when you're stacking your firewood up, you can tell if you're starting to lean or not. If you have a pretty big rack of firewood and it's starting to lean, it could tip over. So keeping it straight is the key. So this project may have looked like it took longer because I was recording at dusk for a few nights in a row. But if I were here like during the daytime like today, I could probably knock it out if I wasn't recording either, probably in about an hour and a half. So that's the next project right over here. So I'm just curious what works for you guys as far as storing firewood. Do you have like a lean-to or a shed? Is it out in the open like this? What I like to do is cover the firewood just at the very top. That way it gets the air into it, but it keeps the rain from going in between. So let me know what works for you guys. This is my best solution. So I hope you find this video interesting, helpful, and informative. If you do, please give it a thumbs up and help support my channel. That's it, friends. Thanks for watching. See you next time.